Hello, welcome to the Friday, August 3rd, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, Brad wrote of a new variation of the good old DHL mail spam as typical for this type of attack. The email tricks the user into running a loader that then installs additional malware. This is where it starts to become a bit unusual with this particular sample. The loader did retrieve an animated GIF file. As it turns out, this file actually was a normal functional file, even displayed the little animation, but it had a executable attached to it. So after the file finished, there was a second file with the executable. Now this executable then included the agent Tesla spyware. Now I read up a little bit on this and agent Tesla has used sort of tricks in the past where it was delivered with, for example, a corrupt header in order again to fake out anti-malware and trick it into not scanning the particular file. That's probably the intention here as well that anti-malware thinks this is just an image I don't have to scan it and that's sort of how this particular file then gets delivered to the victim. The loader then strips off the GIF file and just runs the executable. As usual, Brad provides a number of indicators of compromise that you can use to look for this particular threat in your environment. About a year ago, you may probably not have heard of Microtik routers. They are a bit more of a niche router overall and not as popular as routers from the big brands like Linksys or Netgear. But they keep popping up in this podcast and in security news for, of course, all the wrong reasons. Yet again, Microtik is in the news for a botnet that was built using these routers. And in this case, the botnet engages in crypto mining. Now, the trick here is that it's actually not the router doing the mining. Instead, the system that connects to the internet is tricked into running the CoinHive crypto mining JavaScript. The way this works is that the Microtik router also implements an HTTP proxy. Now, if there is a problem, a file cannot be retrieved that you're trying to load via the proxy, then an error page is being displayed and this error page can, of course, course be customized. So what the malware does is it just loads the CoinHive JavaScript to these error pages. So whenever a user that's connecting via one of these routers does encounter an error, then their browser starts mining crypto coins. Trustwave wrote all of this up and if you have any kind of antivirus, it probably will trigger on the CoinHive miner. And Sian Albenitz from NetSparker found an interesting vulnerability in Microsoft Edge. Interesting in part because, well, it's actually very easy to exploit. The problem here is same origin policy. Now, same origin policy is supposed to prevent JavaScript that I'm loading from one site to send requests to other sites. These requests are typically sent using the XML HTTP request function, and that's the function that's vulnerable here. I don't know if it also affects some of the more modern way of sending these requests, like the fetch API, but very possible it does. So what's the problem here? Microsoft Edge actually does same origin correctly. Where it does run into a problem is once you're loading a local HTML file from your system. In this case, the origin is the file URL, so file colon. That means 
based on the same origin policy, you should now be able to load any other file from the system using JavaScript. Now, browsers typically don't implement it this way because, well, you don't know where this HTML file came from. You may have received an email, you saved it, and then you open it in your browser. You don't want sort of random files to be able to load other files from your system. And then, and that's again, you know, simple to do with JavaScript, send the content of the file off to some random website. Well, that's where Microsoft Edge made the mistake. Microsoft Edge does not treat file URLs special, meaning that once you load an HTML file in the browser from your local system, that HTML file is able to load random files from your system and send them off to whatever website they wish. Now, this can also be exploited via Calendar and Microsoft Mail. So whatever way you find to load the file on your system, once you open it in Microsoft Edge, then you're vulnerable. Sihan states that he tried other browsers too and uh, wasn't able to reproduce this with any browser but Microsoft Edge. Haven't seen any response from Microsoft about this yet. Well, that's it for today. And in case you were waiting, I notified today the winner of the July Raspberry Pi. So sorry if you didn't get the email, then you lost last month, but we'll continue as in August. So if you find any errors, just drop me an email. Best to do it via the ISC website, use the contact form, do something like podcast or Raspberry Pi as a subject that makes it easier at the end of the month to actually then pick a winner. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.